Hi, welcome in friends. We're doing another weekly energy video, this time for the week of September 18th through the 24th. Thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, we are on the final week of summer. Uh, incidentally, it's raining outside a lot today. And I'm wearing my Riot Fest t-shirt because it's Riot Fest weekend. And what we know about Riot Fest in Chicago is that it's not Riot Fest if it doesn't rain. Just keeping all those people in my thoughts and prayers. <laughs> I am going to brunch. Um, let's get on with the astrology. Um, this week, yes, it's the last week of summer because this coming weekend, the 23rd, is the autumn equinox, as well as it's the last week of Virgo season. And Virgo's leaving us a few gifts, something to remember her by, this healer. Um, the sun, as we know, is in Virgo. That's what dictates the season that we're in, is where the sun is in the sky. And the sun illuminates things. The sun is associated with our ego, yes, our identity, yes, our vitality, for sure. Where, what is being illuminated? What is drawing power? And the sun has two, tran two really important transits this week. Well, third, if you consider it's moving into Libra by the, um, on, on the equinox actually the sun opposite neptune this is a bit of a reality check neptune has been in retrograde since um june 30th and it will be until the beginning of december december 6th and this is um, a pretty common retrograde the neptune retrograde it's usually present for about half of the year every year what does it mean for neptune the planet of illusion dreams, creativity, wishful thinking, to be in retrograde, and for it to be opposite the sun. When we're looking, when the opposite conjunction happens, opposition, they're looking directly at each other. So think a bit of a confrontation. And with Neptune retrograde, this is the mask of illusion is falling away. This is our reality check. And also think about the Pisces Virgo axis, Sun and Virgo, Pisces, um, Neptune and Pisces. This is the 612 axis, the day to day, the reality, the mundane, versus the spiritual, metaphysical, abstract, daydreaming. This week, and for however long, you know, the influence of this transit is for you and your personal life. It's not going to be just one day only. Don't miss this opportunity. This is available for all of us. This um, check in with yourself. Check in with how um, reflecting on the first half of the year, for example, where your mind was at, what kind of dreams were you crafting for yourself. And now, does it feel a bit more clearer or are things becoming more clear as to what you need to implement in your day-to-day, -day, in your routines, to build that dream life. Or maybe you're creating some adjustments. You know, maybe there's, maybe, just maybe, there's the possibility of removing your black and white thinking here and finding more gray area where there's more possibilities. I like that version. Because Neptune, as it is, is about our perspectives. What is rooted in reality? And what is living mostly in fantasy in our minds? And how do we bridge that gap? Yeah? All right, the second sun, major sun transit is this trine with Pluto. Again, sun is in Virgo. Pluto is in Capricorn and is retrograde until January. Or so and you know it's moving into Aquarius and we've known this because it's been there this now is our sixth and tenth house activation uh, again a very powerful link to earth signs one is about the day-to-day -day, and one is about our careers our ambitions our reputations so what are you doing each day to ensure you are in fact reaching for your ultimate goal your ultimate destiny and this transit will bring a strong sense of purpose. Um, what else? It's about developing your skills in order to take the next step, which is ultimately integrating that with 
your community, in your outer world. I wonder if the Eight of Pentacles is going to show up today because of this. You know, in the middle of all of this, and I guess starting off the weekend, if the 22nd is Friday, and I believe I'm right on that, the moon is in Capricorn. Wherever the moon is, is where we find our sense of stability. And this week, Friday, you know, our sense of stability comes from all things Capricornian, but more specifically, our ability to organize things, get things done, and take practical, methodical steps towards our ambitions, towards our goals. This weekend has some very interesting energy. We have two uh, transits with Chiron. I've talked about Chiron on this channel before. If you don't know your Chiron in your birth chart, I highly recommend you do some digging and, and um, research it for yourself or come and talk to me about it. Chiron is the wounded healer. And as such, it is the uh, premise that where your wounded healer is, is what you've come to this life to heal. And when you, as you learn to heal that for yourself, you can help others with similar wounds. And as a wound, it holds a lot of transformative power. So we see Venus trine with Chiron. Venus is in Leo. Chiron is in Aries. We see fire and fire working together. They are harmonious. The elements like to work together. And so what we think of here is wounding as an initiator. Think about all the times that a wound, it doesn't have to be physical, it could be emotional, mental, whatever. A wound such as grief or anxiety has triggered us into seeking therapy or healing. This is kind of like that. It's We're turning the lens of self-love back on ourself saying, hey, there's, I think, way more to me here than I realize, and I need to take the time to figure this out. Wounding as initiator for self-discovery. And then Chiron is opposite Mars in Libra. Just as we enter Libra season, we are being reminded how to move as Libra would, you know? Libra is represented by the scales, so balance. We think that Libra is very balanced. But I like to emphasize with Libra that Libra is striving to balance. Libra is also at the energy of war, let's not forget, you know. As such, this could feel like a push and pull between wanting to heal in community because Chiron is the healing aspect. Libra is like this, this, this community aspect in the sense of like all of us together. Let's make things good between us. So this push and pull between wanting to heal in community and the instinct to self-soothe and isolate in times of need. Pay attention to these feelings this weekend. Oh, here's what I wrote. This is interesting. Do others support your core feelings of worthlessness? Who are you around that supports your feelings of worth and or worthlessness? Pay attention to how you feel around other people this weekend. And I wrote a quick note about Libra season uh, in general. Libra season, focus on getting out your own way. So really for me that means linking behavior to desires and taking action in a way that actually supports where we want to go and what we want to do. Can't do without Virgo's energy of that reality check. So I feel like it does have a lot to do with our work, but it doesn't have to be about work too. It could just be about your long-term things. What do you want to be known for? Maybe you want to be known for you know, being a good friend. You know, maybe you want to be known for building a, a strong family. I don't know. But you get what I mean. Um, I want to say a quick thank you for, for dropping in, and especially to those who came to my astrology workshop over the past weekend. It was amazing. We're going to do more, so keep an eye out for that. And the next one is a tarot workshop coming this Saturday on the Equinox, 10 a.m. Chicago Central.
So hit the link in the description box if you're interested to join. Let's get some tarot message for the collective. Only positive things we want to hear right now. Anything that is truly helpful for us in this moment. For those who are watching. For you. For you out there in the screen. Mm -hmm. Well, one card lifted off the top. That's our cut for today. <laughs> so we're going to find out what that card is because it's on the bottom. Nine of Pentacles. Okay. Immediately I think of self-worth. Right? Our confidence, our ability to build wealth and share wealth. I do think of confidence a lot with this card. Are we not feeling so confident? Yeah. If that's the case, it's it might be because Two of Swords... No easy way forward. Or maybe, maybe we can't see everything. We can't see whatever situation we're dealing with. Okay, and then the Nine of Cups in reverse too. Are we not open to the possibility of getting everything that you want? Possibly. Why are you telling yourself no? Are you telling yourself no? Queen of Cups in reverse. She's telling me you need to look within and find out what you really want. This, this, this is what it is. You gotta, you, you might not know what you want, and you might need to figure out what you want. Hangman. A time of discomfort, yes, but he's doing it intentionally. You know, this is self-imposed. Let's remember that. This is a time of illumination and enlightenment. And it's a time for observing things. Don't make judgments. Don't even take impulsive action. Just observe. And then, there we go. Scorpio, death, transformation. So let's get on with our reading. The Five of Swords, walking away from conflict, Queen of Wands. Wow. King of Wands. Look how they came out. King and Queen of Wands. Is this about a partnership, a relationship? Fire. So that's spirit. It's a spiritual connection, a love connection, a passionate connection. And preceding it was the Five of Swords. This is a challenging energy. Ultimately, it's about like winners and losers. And I always ask the question, why must there be winners and losers? Why? Remember, if you feel like you need to win and get an edge over somebody, why? Why do we compare our, our success and why does our success... This is old paradigm stuff, by the way. I know that that's, this is not where we're going as people, as humanity. We're moving away from this. But I feel like... Let's find out more about this connection. But anytime I see the Five of Swords here, it's like, remember what it feels like to lose. Remember that it's not about winning because then somebody loses. And that's not what, that's not what we're doing here. That's not what we're doing here. Um, Nine of Swords in reverse. Page of Cups in reverse. The Emperor. King of Pentacles in reverse. Ace of Swords and the Sun. Okay. Well, the good news is it turns around. Um, not going to lie, there might be somebody that is the, if this is a partnership. If this is a relationship, if this is for you, if this is resonating. I think this is a very challenging reading and I'll, I'm gonna try to piece it together. But basically there's a few themes here. I believe that there's a pair, two people that either want to be together or had been together or something like that that go together in some way that I can't totally understand. And I think that on one side, there is a little bit of what feels like naivety, but I think actually is more kind of like impulsive and immature, like something is childlike here, or maybe they're just younger. 
Maybe there's like a younger person and somebody who's much older and has a lot more wisdom. Um, if I'm reading this in one way, it, it shows that the younger person, they yes, they may have sort of like brash or impulsive tendencies or say things that are not exactly, um, or, you know, or, or be playful in some way, you know but they're pretty close to their truth. And then this older person, I don't know how much older, but they're closer to the sun. Remember the sun was here showing us some with, with these major transits. They're close to their joy, their happiness by way of the emperor, as in, Having spent a lot of time, it looks like they, that this person has spent a lot of time and effort in building structure in their life that brings them happiness. And for this other person, their truth feels very different. It's more flowing and not structured. So here I see gray area of possibilities of how to reach one's truth. And it's almost like two people who would otherwise seem very compatible have very different ways of being in the world and each ultimately arriving at their desired, you know, thing. In fact, I would say the outcomes are pretty compatible too. The Ace of Swords and the Sun, they're very different. They're definitely very different energies but both powerful and kind of high, high up there. Ace of Swords is like, aha, this idea. And the sun is this very warm, radiant source of energy and happiness and joy. So let me backtrack a little bit in this reading because this Five of Swords here and this Nine of Swords in reverse Maybe you felt like, if this is you, if you're one of these people in this connection, you've actually had to step away. And it, you're right, you know, it's not about winners or losers. But this is actually about self-preservation and maybe realizing that this connection was not ultimately compatible, even though on the surface it may seem as though it was. This is about you just trying to get your sleep at night. Uh, maybe you're having things, things, messages come in your dreams. This is what the Nine of Swords is about. It, it is a card that indicates sort of anxiety. It also is, is a card that indicates we're not alone. And in, in order to rejuvenate ourselves, sometimes it is necessary to take some, so, take some boundaries. Do you know what I mean? King of Pentacles in reverse. So... This could, this is the energy of some ultimate power. I'm using the word ultimate a lot, and I feel like that's not very gray thinking. That's like ultimate is like the supreme. But there was just a great force, a great physical force. Um, and it's in the reverse, so I'm thinking like feeling the depletion of resources in order to make this work. Something like that. I see a lack of confidence. I see a lack of desire. I see also just not, not like the ability to not see. We cannot see, we, we cannot know something if we cannot see it. That takes um, blind faith. And blind faith is not here today, not in this reading. I think that in either case, both parties here appear to have gotten what they wanted, but I don't believe that they're together. Do you know what I mean? Let me just grab a couple cards here to see final messages from the universe. Thank you. <gasps> no fucking way. I'm sorry. Can I curse? The Eight of Pentacles.
this, I, I was saying, like, I wonder if this card's going to come out. Of course it comes out. And this really underpins everything because this confirms for me that this is probably about a work situation, first of all, somebody at work. You know, like a work wife or a work husband. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> the queen and the king of wands. They're like, you know, they're a pair. This also underpins a lot of the transits for the week. Um, this idea of doing your, building your skills, cultivating your skills so that you can do the work that you want to be doing ultimately. Or you're, you're... And this is a card also of isolation, doing work on your own. We must balance the need for being in community and healing within community and know the distinction between when it's time to work in partnership, Mars and Libra, and when it's time to do the work alone, for sure. I hope that you use this week and this energy as a chance to reflect on your process and how your day-to-day -day is supporting how are you communicating where you ultimately want to arrive at? Okay. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, I'll have the recommended listening below. What else can I say? Um, the tarot workshops coming on, coming up this weekend. I have other workshops all the way through October 14th. And on Meetup, free Reiki this week, Wednesday night. Feel free to leave a comment below. Let me know how this resonates and what's going on for you guys, okay? Uh, thanks so much again and take care.